Skywatch Media News for February the 13th, 2022. In the wake of the horrific Tonga eruption on January 15th, a new round of incredible volcanic eruptions are taking place from some of the most active volcanoes on the planet, and they are threatening to create a volcanic crisis scenario if the present escalation continues. Krakatoa, located between the Indonesian islands of Java and Sumatra, began erupting on February the 3rd. The image from the European Space Agency's Sentinel-2 satellite shows the eruption sending a thick column of gas rising 660 feet above the volcano's upper rim. On February the 5th, the volcano exploded, sending thick ash into the atmosphere. Krakatoa has been erupting on and off since the late 20th century. In December of 2018, an underwater collapse at its southwestern slope caused a devastating tsunami in the Sunda Strait, reaching a height of at least 42 feet. Eruptions in 2019 and 2020 followed. You may recall that Krakatoa erupted famously in the year 1883, destroying nearly 70% of the island of Krakatoa and significantly impacting the global climate. The eruption ejected an estimated 25 cubic kilometers of rock, which is the equivalent of over 6,000 acres of land. The blast produced by the eruption was heard in Australia, more than 2,200 miles from the epicenter. In 1927, a new volcanic island known as Anuk Krakatoa emerged from the caldera left behind which has since been one of the Earth's most active volcanoes. On February 10th, Mount Etna, Europe's largest and most active volcano, located near Milo, Sicily, erupted in a most powerful and spectacular scene. The eruption created a rare volcanic storm that sent bolts of lightning scurrying across the sky over eastern Sicily. Volcanic ash skyrocketed into the atmosphere six miles above sea level. This was one of the most electrifying eruptions in recent memory. In the Philippines, the Tall Volcano is acting up again, having recorded 152 quakes, including one which lasted for three minutes. On February 7th, a Friatub magmatic burst took place creating a white plume billowing some 3,280 feet into the atmosphere. This type of eruption is one in which magma comes into contact with water in the crater, creating a large plume of gas and vapor. Tall is one of the world's smallest active volcanoes, standing just over 1,000 feet. But don't let its height fool you. It is considered one of the most dangerous volcanoes on the planet. In January of 2020, the volcano exploded with a column of ash and steam that extended nearly 5,000 feet into the sky. 
Heavy ash fell across the capital city of Manila, forcing the evacuation of more than 100,000 people. Scientists have warned that, that the tall volcano's magmatic eruptions are extremely hazardous and that the area is in danger of eruption-related quakes and the potential for a volcanic tsunami. Last month, the Wolf Volcano, located in the Galapagos Islands, 600 miles west of Ecuador, erupted after many years of inactivity. It is the largest and tallest volcano in the island chain, located about 60 miles from Isla Isabella, the nearest human settlement. On January 7th, NASA's Terra satellite acquired an image of the plume moving west over the Pacific. When it erupted late on January the 6th, its glow was captured by the infrared imaging on board the Suomi satellite. The eruption produced a spectacular river of fire that was so bright that it was visible from space as it meandered for miles with its slithering orange line. On February 3rd, SpaceX launched 49 broadband satellites from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida with an intended orbit 130 miles above the Earth. The satellites were packaged inside of the Falcon 9 rocket's payload, where they were set to join more than 1,500 operational spacecraft, which are part of SpaceX's global internet network, where they will beam broadband signals to more than 145,000 subscribers in 25 countries around the globe. What followed may come as a complete surprise, being that it was never fully anticipated. But on February the 4th, the day after the launch, a solar flare from a geomagnetic storm doomed 40 of the 49 satellites, eventually sending them crashing to Earth. It now appears from the initial investigation that the solar storm caused the atmospheric drag to increase by 50% over previous Starlink launches. And even though the satellites were placed in safe mode, the drag was just too much for them to handle. As a result, the swelling of the Earth's atmosphere prevented more than 80% of the satellites from reaching their final destination. Footage of the stricken satellites has emerged from Puerto Rico, in which stargazers observed the broken satellites hurtling across the sky one after another, followed by flames that were tailing the chunks of satellite debris. The explanation from SpaceX is that the speed and the severity of the solar storm significantly warmed Earth's atmosphere, thus increasing atmospheric density at the low orbit altitude of the satellites, therefore creating intense friction on the 40 satellites that were knocked out. This appears to be an unprecedented event, the first time that satellite failures caused by an increase of atmospheric density from a solar storm have been destroyed by intense electromagnetic radiation. There is now a genuine concern that events such as this one may have the potential to severely impact NASA's science and human spaceflight missions going forward. And so it is that a relatively minor solar storm brought down dozens of satellites, which then poses the question, what will a large X-class flare do to the Starlink constellations? It's a question that definitely needs answers if we hope to protect our planet from the devastating effects of a much stronger storm before it does lasting damage to our infrastructure. The passing of the ages changes all things, time, earth, the stars of the sky, the bounds of our existence. It changes all things that are around and underneath our feet. Everything changes except for our unshakable core of strength and calm in these turbulent times. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching, and always keep looking to the sky.